So since its release on medium format, Kodak Gold has developed a pretty decent reputation as being one of the most versatile color film stock options out there. And what I wanted to do is see just how versatile a film stock it is by seeing if I could push it to full stops. Now, when it comes to explaining pushing and pulling film, there are plenty of videos out there that get really in depth and provide a much more detailed description than I possibly could. However, essentially what you're doing is you are metering for a different ISO than the film stock is made for. So Kodak Gold is 200 ISO. So what I did is I metered everything at 800 ISO, so two full stops higher than it's meant to be shot at. What I then did is told the lab that I took the film to that I'd pushed this stock to uh, two extra stops and they developed it in accordance to that to still get a balanced exposure. Now, the main reason why people will push film is to combat low light situations, because by pushing your film, you're getting an extra two stops worth of light into your camera, meaning that you can shoot at faster shutter speeds, meaning that if you're wanting to freeze action or if you're shooting handheld, you're able to get much better results. However, some people actually simply push their film because of the creative look that it gives. It will more often than not provide you with increased contrast and increased grain, which if that's the look that you're after, it's a great way to be able to get that. Now me and Sam were in the studio last week and didn't have anything to do. So what I thought I would do is try Kodak Gold out and push it those two stops. So I metered everything at ISO 800 and the shots varied between a 60th of a second and one 125th of a second. We were using continuous lighting because I wanted to be able to meter correctly and I metered for both the highlights and the shadows and then took a balance between them. So for example, in this image, when I metered for the shadows, it was saying 1 30th of a second. When I metered for the highlights, it was saying 1 1 25th. So I shot it at a 60th to hopefully get a balanced exposure of both of them. Now these are the scans that I got back from the lab and I was really, really happy with these. Although they are a little bit flat, once I'd played with the black point and made some minor adjustments and applied those adjustments to all of the frames, I've got something that I was really, really happy with. I'm really impressed by how the film managed to take being pushed those two stops. And also to be fair, I'm really happy with how I'd managed to expose it because none of these are over or under exposed. So I'm really, really happy with that as well. There is in definitely increased contrast, but not as much as I was actually expecting. And the same with the grain. It is there, it is there and it is noticeable but it's not in your face, it's not too much, which I thought there was a possibility with gold being a somewhat lesser quality color film. I did think that maybe it would be too much for it, but I'm really, really happy with how they turned out. It definitely shows just how versatile Kodak Gold is and the lessons that I learn here in the studio can then be applied if I need to uh, use them sort of out on location. So if I'm shooting and it's an overcast day or if the sun's going down, I know that I can meter for two stops up, let the lab know, and those frames are definitely gonna be usable so long as I've exposed them correctly. So what about you? Have you tried pushing or pulling film before? If so, what were the reasons for you doing it? Was it because of low light? Was it just experimenting? Was it that you needed a faster shutter speed because you were, you were shooting a model or something like that? I'd be really interested to know both the reasons why you did it and whether you were happy with the outcome or not. I'm definitely gonna be able to take the lessons that I've learned today in the studio and use them out in the field. And it is something that I'm looking forward to doing. And my main takeaway from this is, again, just proving how versatile Kodak Gold is. When you bear in mind that it's probably about 20% cheaper, 20, 25% cheaper than the equivalent medium format film stocks, I think it's really, really useful. And I think it may be my film stock of choice moving forward when shooting medium format color photos. But that's a question for another day. We've still got a few more rolls to shoot to decide, uh, to decide something like that. Other than that, thank you, Sam, for being my model as always and, and basically just being my studio buddy when we decide that we need to dick around and experiment with things like this. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.